In this video, I'm going to be making a completely functional LEGO robotic vacuum, and then I'm going to be comparing it to an actual one. Let's do this. So here's the plan. I got an NXT brick, which I can code to do whatever I want, and I have three motors over here as well. So two of these will drive it, so each of them will have their own wheel, so it can move kind of like a tank, and the third one will be used to spin the two brushes on the front. Okay, so first I'm going to work on the motor that controls the two brushes, so let's build it. Okay, so this is my design for the brush piece. It's made of plastic because it's Lego, not actual brush, but it should still work. And I gotta make another one of these, but then we can make the whole system to make them rotate. Okay guys, so I got the two brushes set up and the motor connected, so it's a moment of truth. Let's see if it works. Ooh, look at that. I can like change the speed too. Now I need to build tires with these two motors. Okay, so this is designed for the tires. I just need this on both of, both of the motors. So each one will have its own tire and it will just roll. Okay guys, now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's see if I can get some pieces vacuumed up into this. So I got some studs piled up. Let's see if it can like sweep them up into this little place I made. Oh, dang it. It's really too far apart and they don't get it all. Well, let me fix that. Oh my gosh. Everything looks to be lined up. Um, I'll test it from here first. Yep, look at that. It's clearing out on both sides. There we go. I don't know how fast I should make it go. Wow, those went everywhere. D did I even go up there? Okay, I got problems to figure out. Let me explain to you the problem. On most Lego pieces, the, they're curved and everything, which is what I'm using. But this little lip right here, the studs are going like this. This is upside down for you. Well. Well, flip around in editing. <laughs> These pieces like this, the studs hit on them right there instead of sliding up and deflect. So guys, I had to redesign the entire thing pretty much because I can't figure out a good way to do this. As you can see, I tried strings and everything and they just it just doesn't work. So the new way I designed is kind of like this rotating thing. So see, it rotates like this and it scoops stuff up and I can scoop it up to a higher level and like this. Okay guys, so this design right here, it still doesn't work. All my designs seem to fail. The reason why this one doesn't work is because this can land on top of these studs and it like launches the whole thing upward. Let's just try it again, see if it will work. It says to stay flush with the ground. Yeah, it gets jammed really easily. It like keeps getting launched up. So I gotta come up with another design. Okay, so I finally came up with an idea that I'm pretty sure will work this time, which I'm really glad about. It rubs against the ground and it picks up most of them. So what I'm gonna have to do is make a little funnel that puts them into here. Let's test it. Should I go this way? Oh, it works so well. Okay, every single stud went in. That gray one just had a little hard of a time. Look at that. Oh, it cleaned them. Let's go. So this build is actually completely uneven because of this motor right here. As you can see, if we zoom in a little more, this is three blocks wide and everything else isn't. So three blocks wide makes it so the entire build is three blocks wide. At least that's how I made it. I could have made it so it's not like that, but I did. So now I have to build everything uneven. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought it'd be. So what I did is I put a Technic brick in here and I, with pins, I attached the motor um, and I'm hoping it'll turn it. It looks to turn it, it's just, I'm wondering how sharp it's gonna turn. Okay guys, so I attached both of these motors to the back so they both like sit on the ground like this. And I have these long cables, which are annoying because 
It's like I have one super short one and then I have, these are the next shortest ones I have. So the one super short one goes for the middle motor. So right now I got to code everything, make sure it works and all that stuff. And then I'll decorate it, make it look a little nicer. But yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I moved to the floor to test this thing out. I move forward. Oh, backwards is actually forwards. Everything works there. Boom, running flawlessly. Look at that beauty. Throw some studs down. Backwards is forwards. And then I just drive into it. Look at that. I got all of them up, picked up. So then I'll go here and press stop. Yeah, I plop this out, one came out, but you see? And they all go in this bulb. I get my stud box and boom, dump them all back. Just need to make it look a little nicer, hopefully. On the front, I put a little bumper. Uh, it's, I don't know, it just pokes out a little bit and it's kind of hard to make because if you see right here, if it hits a wall over here, it doesn't register it. It only registers it if it's down in front, which is a very big problem. Everything's completely functional. Like it works like perfectly. I even upgraded the battery tray to use a Technic pin and it works so good, like it just slides right in. It's working really good, so I should make this thing look better. So I finally finished it, but the table looks a little messy. There we go, that's more like it. So the shell made this thing look so much better. Like, look at this, it actually looks like a vacuum now, and if you saw it before, I'll pull up a clip, a picture right now. It looked really bad, but you can see up front, it scoops it up really simple. And then out back, there's a little dust tray you can take out that holds everything. So that's what this looks like. You can see like the orange accents kind of like go with the Mindstorms brick color. You know, I tried to go for a theme here. Uh, this little button up front can make it so maybe I can make some code with it. This is a handle right here. It makes it really easy to pick up. So let's meet the competitors. There's the Lego robot vacuum. I completely made out of Lego, 100% Lego. Then we have this. This thing is insane. The Bob Pet Air Slam, it has so many more features than just my Lego one. Like look at all this stuff, Wi-Fi, app enabled. It's got everything. It's got mapping, it vacuums and it mops. And it can mop and vacuum at the same time. It's really cool. And it works with Google Assistant and Alexa. Look who it is. He wants to meet you guys. He's sensing all the edges of the table. Let's see if the Lego one can keep up. So how this thing actually works is that these two brushes spin in on both sides and then this middle one will just pick it up and then it puts all that in this dustbin right here. So I'm going to be doing five tests to see just how good my Lego vacuum is compared to this one. But some of the tests regular robot vacuums aren't really meant to do so we'll have to see who's going to win. So the first test is seeing how good they can normally vacuum. This on the floor is corn flour which is kind of like a grainy flour type thing. Normal vacuum it shouldn't have a problem with this. Here he goes. Well, he's kind of getting the area. He got some of it. Oh, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, he's going around. He's out of the frame. I mean, you can still see a little bit on the floor here. So let me bring him back around. So far, so good. He got most of it. Let's just run him one more time. Doesn't really go the way I want it because he just figures out his own way to do stuff, which he's a smart vacuum. What do you expect? Boom, look at that. Completely clean. Look at, look at how good Bob is. There we go. Look at it down there. You can see it. That. He also got some dog hair too. So he pretty much picked it all up. Let's see how the Lego one does. So since Bob did such a good job, that's a good rhyme by the way, uh, I just dumped out his dustbin and look, it's just all right there. He did such a good job. We want max power, boys. You can hear it running now? So let's do this. Um, yeah, I mean, it didn't do too well. Let, let, let me just turn the power down. Let's go like that, just to see if it helps. Okay, you can see the trail, guys. It doesn't look to be doing too well. So from the looks of it, it didn't pick up very much. So I want to see how much it actually picked up. So in the bin, you can see a little bit in there. You can see little specks of it, but there's, it picked up a lot of dog hair, surprisingly. <laughs> so this next test I actually designed my Lego robot vacuum for. So as you can see, studs, I just spilled a couple. I'm pretty sure Bob wasn't designed to pick up Lego studs, but he could have been. Uh, so we'll have to see. There we go. There we go, through the studs. Look at that little bit of off-roading those tires are doing. Look at that. Look at how clean it is. Right where it went through, completely clean. Let's see. Oh, yep. Definitely works there. So my Lego vacuum literally has no suspension, but you know, it still does a little off-roading. But look at Bob's suspension. This is the wheel. That's the travel distance. Those wheels make it really easy for Bob to go up some pretty big lips in your house, which is really nice. But let's see how good he can pick up the studs. Like, he can off-road over them, but how good can he actually pick them up? Let me get a close-up. 
Oh my gosh, that was so loud, but look at how good it worked. Hey Google, stop Bob. I'm surprised Bob is so good at picking up studs. It was a little loud, but it was very efficient. Let's see how many you got. Maybe it's the best way to pick up your Lego, guys. You got Lego all over the floor? Just, just send your Bob. But look down there. If I can up so many. Dang, this one wasn't really a clear winner. So I think I think it's kind of a draw. Baldwin did a really good job on this one. So the next one isn't really a test, it's just my opinion. So it's which one looks better. And in my opinion, I've designed this one and everything, but I really like the sleekness of Bob. Like this, these designs and just stealth black, it looks nice. I mean, my Lego one is cool and all, and it works, but Bob, he looks really cool. <laughs> okay, so test number four is how reliable are they? My Lego one over here, I, I mean, it's pretty reliable. Like it does what I intended for it to do, which is pick up Lego studs. So it does that, you know, it's made of Lego though. So it's always going to do this. Like I can just go like this. I can just break that off. But on the, this vacuum, I don't think I can just break that off. I designed it though, so it's pretty strong in the structure. It's not too reliable, but it is reliable, if you know what I mean. Bob over here, as you'd expect, uh, he's very reliable. He gets the job done. You can just have him sweep when you're not at home and he, he knows what to do. How he does everything is this bumper right here, wherever it gets pushed from, he knows not to go there because he hit against something. It's really cool, he tries to find a way around it when wherever. This sensor on top is a LiDAR sensor, so it senses what's around it so it can see stuff. You can see like my desk's up there and stuff, so it's, it's really cool. And then also on each corner, there's a sensor. So up here there's a sensor, up here there's a sensor, and up here there's a sensor. That makes it so it doesn't go over ledges. So if you have stairs or something, you don't want it to go down like, I know I do, it just detects it's there and it doesn't go over it. And number five is extra features, which these guys have a lot of. The cool thing about my Lego one is the net down here is completely removable. So I can just slide these both off on either side and it just comes right out. And of course I made the little button pressy thing at the front. And I also made the handle, which is extremely useful for picking this thing up. And with my Lego one, I can control it from my phone, which I can do with Bob, but Bob kind of like does the area, you know, by himself. But this, I literally do everything manually. It can't vacuum without you. So Bob has so many extra features because the app could literally just update and give him another feature. So technically he's got like infinite, but you know, I'll show you through some of them. So over here, there's these three icons, go, charge, and Wi-Fi. So you can just tell him to charge with just pressing the button on top of him. You can press him to go. If you don't have your phone with you or something, you just press those. Bob just like scans the floor of your house and then he knows exactly what routes to take every single time, which is really cool. And with these things poking out, they also get underneath the floorboards. So the first time Bob goes around your house, he'll scan it out seeing what he needs to do later when he sweeps again and the thing is you can like make rooms in the app and stuff it's really cool you can have him sweep certain rooms you can have him sweep certain spots you can make no sweep zones so bob i would say wins the category so bob is completely autonomous so if he runs out of battery when like sweeping your house or whatever he'll automatically go charge himself and then once he's fully charged or however much charge he needs, he'll go back out and sweep up the rest. If you want to buy a Bob Sweet Bob Pet Hair Slam, which is Bob, of course, I'll link up here in the corner and I'll link top of the description. On the shipping label, they even had a birth certificate for him, which is really funny. So there's my Lego robot vacuum, guys. Look at this beauty. I mean, he worked decently well, especially with the Lego studs. But as always, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell.